A few days ago, I got an email from OpenAI saying that they've released a new model, ChatGPT 1.0, and that this performs exceptionally well on advanced reasoning tasks. I've been quite interested for a while for using ChatGPT as a bit of an aid for GAMSAT study, so I thought I'd give it a go and see how this new model performs. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's James. I'm a first year medical student and tutor of section three of the GAMSAT. And as I said in the intro, I wanted to try to see if we can, I've been very interested to see if we can use ChatGPT to help us study for the GAMSAT. So this is a bit of a recording of an attempt of me using this new ChatGPT model to generate some GAMSAT questions and see if it's possible to actually help improve your critical thinking and problem solving skills. As a disclaimer, you do need the premium version of ChatGPT to access this model. So if you don't have that, you won't be able to, to use this. All right, so I've crafted just a little prompt here that I just capturing some information that I think is generally kind of sums up GAMSAT problems. So, you know, unclear, verbose stem, and then um, a kind of question associated that that needs kind of critical thinking and deduction to, to solve. So we'll see how it goes. So this model did say that it thinks about things a little bit, which is good because whenever I've used ChatGPT before, it kind of just spits something out straight away. And it, I feel like that doesn't capture the kind of multi-stage process. So already I'm quite kind of happy to see that this one was thinking for a little bit before it spat out the question. So obviously it's limited in what it can produce, so it can only produce um, kind of worded questions, but this looks already quite good, quite a long passage. I can see a lot of different enzymes and substances, so that's gonna be quite confusing for me. So let's have a look at the question. So whenever I get a GAMSAT question, I always go straight to the question and then I try to identify which parts of the question I need to understand better and which bits are relevant. So which one of the following scenarios is most likely for a plant exhibiting pink flowers? So it talks about enzyme Y, protein R, enzyme Z, enzyme Z, and enzyme X. So that's another good way that you can kind of hone what you're looking at. So because I've got two things about enzyme Z, I'm probably gonna start there and just try to understand if enzyme Z actually has an effect on pink flowers or not. So now we go up to our stem and we're just kind of looking for that. So substance C is converted, so I'm reading this line here, substance C is converted to pigment anthocyanin by enzyme Z, which give gives flowers their red color. So already that seems quite good. So I'm thinking, all right, I need something about pink colors. So that all seems to be related. The, all these enzymes seem to be related to uh, red, to the color red. And then mutations can occur, which leads to a loss of function. So it doesn't seem to be, that doesn't seem to be too relevant. Uh, and then this part's about, so I'm, as I'm going, I'm just trying to simplify the information. Um, this one's about spontaneously converting a yellow pigment. Okay, that doesn't seem too relevant. This says about protein R. So protein R inhibits the expression of the gene encoding enzyme Y, which converts substance C. Oh, which converts substance B to C. So a group of these plants exhibit various flower colors, red, pink, blue, yellow, and white. Okay, so white is produced, but it doesn't say anything about white. So the thing that I'm kind of drawing to here is that we have a red color. So what's gonna make that turn pink realistically? So what I'm kind of drawn to is this substance B, which is colorless. So I think if you had some amount of the colorless substance and some amount of the red substance, which is anthocyanin, that would probably give us a pink 
um, pink flower. So which of the following scenarios is most likely responsible for a plant exhibiting pink flowers? So if it had a non-functional enzyme Y, I think that means that you couldn't get substance C, which I think you're going to need for red. So I don't think it's A. The plant overexpresses protein R and has a functional enzyme Z. So if you have Z, you're going to get red, which is the anthocyanin. And if it overexpresses protein R, then inhibits the expression of... Oof, that's a bit tricky. Inhibits enzyme Y. So I feel like that would mean you don't get red because you need... You need enzyme Y to get substance C. Okay. Um, the plant has a partially functional enzyme Z. That seems quite good because enzyme Z produces red from substance C. So if it's partially functional, that means we'll get some red, but probably we'll also get some substance C and then maybe... I don't know, maybe that means we get a buildup of substance B. And then the plant lacks enzyme X. Okay. And I don't think, yeah, I don't think we want that because that means we can't produce that. So I think I would say C, but this was quite challenging. Uh, let's hope I'm right. <laughs> but that was, that was quite a good question. I do think that that actually is quite valuable to get yourself thinking about what the the options are and how all the things interact i think i haven't seen chat gpt kind of whip up a question like that so i got it right great so option c states that the plant is partial functional partially functional enzyme z so this means that substance c is only partially converted to the red pigment as a result the amount of red pigment produced is less than normal um, there are no additional so I did kind of notice that I saw that um, I didn't I didn't put too much weight on it, but I thought the alkaline gives you blue, and there's something about the acidic turning it yellow or something. Here, same bit. So I thought that um, I, I thought we don't want yellow or blue. So I guess that's another another. Uh, kind of positive which they said here about the neutral soil conditions so something i thought could be useful is if the if it can kind of help you so how can i better improve my ability to think about problems like this so i feel like this could be a really good use of chat gpt because it you can not only generate the questions but it can actually give you ways to understand the question because i think they're really helpful in the acer material when you do get that explanation of the question so this already seems quite good so highlighting key information you would have seen me doing that as i went through summarizing each paragraph to really uh, it's hard to do quite quickly but that's that's something i definitely agree with i think you need to identify which bit is relevant and which is not and then you need to summarize it really briefly so i think that's great advice uh, you can definitely do this kind of stuff, visual diagrams, but again, under time pressure, I think that's quite hard. And then, yeah, relationships for sure. Eliminate op options systematically. I definitely did that. I kind of I looked a little bit at cause and effect. So I was trying to determine what the effect, the relationship between those things were. And this looks, yeah, this looks really good. I mean, yeah, it's gone... <laughs> it's given me quite a lot of different things actually uh, believe in yourself that's a great one so yeah i think that it, that actually is quite good advice so maybe we'll try one more and see how we go so i asked it to make another question but it just basically did a repeat of that question just with different terms so i've asked it to make a, a similar question but with different skills required so we'll see what it what it can kind of dish out all right All right, so it's whipped up something something different. Again, about genes, but 
We'll give this a go. Okay, so but based on the data and observation, which of the following conclusions is most supported? So predation pressure has a greater influence on coloration than water temperature. Water temperature, so there's there's things about color like coloration and water temperature. That's something that I'm summarizing from these two that is important. Gold morphs has a, have a genetic advantage that makes them more prevalent in all conditions. Both water temperature and predation pressure equally influence coloration. Okay. So we need to kind of understand how how these things influence what do I need to look at water temperature and gene expression okay so the coloration is yeah so produced by these two genes s and g and this the expression of these is influenced by environmental factors, specifically water and predation levels. Okay. Okay. So. So these are both. These are both going to have an effect. Um. So I need to look at. So gold morphs. So what's that? Gold coloration. I feel. Okay, so <clears throat> how I'm thinking about this one is in zone one, we have, so maybe I'll start with zone two because that's low and low. So that seems quite good for me because that's kind of, I'm thinking that's like a controlled case. So I can then see what the effects of changing are from that one. So when we have low levels of each, we get 30% gold morphs. If we increase the temperature from low to high, we change the, the percentage of gold by 10%. If we change the predation, oh, sorry, that's gone, that's gone both. So if we compare zone two to zone four, that's just changing the temperature. We go from 30 to 50%, so sorry, 30 to 80, so a 50% increase. <clears throat> or really actually a 200% increase, but it increases by 50%. And if we go from low predation to high predation, we only change it 20%. And if we change both, we get something kind of in the middle. So I feel like temperature has a greater effect because if we, and, I, and you can kind of see that because if they had a, an equal effect, because as we go from low to high predation, we get less gold. As we go from low to high temperature, we get more gold. So these are in conflicting, it's kind of like a push and pull here. One's going negative, one's going positive. So when we combine them together, which is zone three, so when we go from low to high for each of them, uh, you can see which one's winning based on which way it's going, if it's going up or going down. So the fact that when we go from zone two to zone three, which is low to high for both, we can see that you get more gold morphs that means that the change in temperature is having a bigger effect because you're getting more gold. So I would say, um, I'd say water temperature, yeah, I'd say B here. So let's see if that's right. Thinking, creating thought provoking queries, it's good. Jeez, it definitely takes a bit of time to to think about the, the correct answer, considering it's already, you know, presumably it's already come up with an answer. All right, correct answer B, so that's good. So water temperature, so that's kind of, it looks like they kind of looked at it the same way. So they, to determine which one has a greater effect, they need to analyze the change in each. So yeah, so they've basically just done that. So they've They've done very similar to what I did, just kind of compare across different conditions and then determine the, the increase on it. So it looks like they've, they've gone through quite a similar um, 
quite a similar process, but then they've also said why these are less supported. Yeah, so uh, happy that I got both of those right, but I think ultimately it's it's quite a good resource. It's, these questions are definitely quite challenging. They require you to, to think quite deeply, and I think that there's definitely, I'm sure many of you have kind of seen a question with enzyme kinetics or something like that, which is doing this exact same step. So ultimately, I'm, I'm quite um, quite impressed with, with these GAMSAT questions so far from this new ChatGPT model. If you found this video interesting, I'd love it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. And let me know in the comments if you've been using this new ChatGPT model for any of your GAMSAT study, or if you'd like to see me make more videos in the future, kind of similar to this one where I'm actually using it and trying those questions. But otherwise, until then, I'll uh, see you in the next video.